Alright guys, welcome back to another M Creator tutorial. So today what we're going to be covering is fences. We're using Nerdy's block state plugin in order to make the different states. So this is just one block. We don't have any additional blocks or anything like that in the um, actual thing. We, As you can see, we just have this mossy fence here. So uh, with the AI pathfinding, as you can see, it doesn't allow pigs to hop over it. And it is, as you can see, the hitbox is just right along here. I've actually set the hitbox to be a solid area just to make it a little bit easier for um, building. So if we right click on it, as you can see, we can actually place it a little bit easier than if we were to do each part of the thing. Uh, we'll be covering the models in today, uh, as well as the rotations for those models, and then uh, showing what the script and everything is set up. So, uh, just a quick recap. So we can actually set up something like this. As you can see, there's like corner pieces. There is um, the T junctions, and there's also uh, cross junctions as well, like this. So you can see that there's like a few different parts and what I'm doing is I'm just rotating the model uh, based on the connections if there is the same block um, next to the corners. So if say we just place this block here, we're just testing if there's a uh, the same block over on this side and the same block over on this side. And then the rotation and everything is automatically calculated. Uh, and we know that we need this particular block state, which tells us that we need a corner. So it goes like that. So that's basically it in general. Um, not much else to basically describe. I am using the um, straight piece for the icon for the fence itself. It's very similar to what Mojang's done with their item texture. So it's kind of like that. Uh, I'll I was going to do the post, but it makes more sense to do it through a um, straight piece like this. So the straight piece is literally just this piece right here. So, and then there's end pieces as well. And then of course the posts and I'm just using nearest neighbor and block added, I think to actually get the fences to update. So every time I place one down, it automatically sends a neighboring update to another one and then it updates that block. So say this is the end piece, I place a block down, it sends a neighbor update to this one and it goes, okay, I need to update here. And then this one automatically updates for that particular part already. So that's basically what's going on. All right, let's go into block bench and we can take a look at how the models are set up and we'll take it from there. Okay, so we'll take a look at the this is the uh, post first and then we'll take a look at the other models. So we have the post. Um, I have set up call facing on the top and the bottom faces because those part connect with other blocks and uh, that will improve performance. Now if you don't have this option right here where it says call face, uh, basically what you want to do is you want to go to your toolbar under your UV map part and then you want to go customize toolbar and then you want to search for call and there should be a one that comes up where it just says call face and that's basically the one that you want to add to your toolbar here and that will give you this little uh drop down now how to how this works is basically whatever face uh direction of the block so for example this is this face is facing down what you would want to do is set that call face to down. So if any blocks on the bottom of this block are connected to this, then that texture will be disabled. Now, if it's something inside the, the block itself, then you don't want to call face it um, because it's not gonna be connecting to anything, but only textures that are exactly face are flush with the cube itself. So um, basically this part, anything, a regular block so just to kind of give you an idea I'll just create a another cube just as an example so basically anything that is where these faces meet is basically where you would want to make your call faces so if this was a solid block you would need all six sides hopefully that makes sense as you can see these textures here just kind of pop out at the top and bottom here so that's why those two sides were needed but not the ones on the inside of the block 
All right, so let's move on to the other one. There's no particular set rotation for this one. Um, it's just to make sure it's in the center and you're, you should be good to go for that one. Uh, there is the end piece, which is a little bit different. I am making sure that the rotation is set to the north direction. I've set up call facing on these two parts for the thing. As you can see, this is set to north. And I have also set the bottom parts for the ones that connect to the bottom and top. So that's all set up there. And the other important thing to note is it doesn't matter if the rotation switches in the game. Uh, when this block basically rotates, uh, the call faces will automatically update based on the rotation of the block. So you don't need to worry about that. Just make sure that the actual parts are that connect to the cube are in the right direction and you should be fine to go. Uh, again, this is just the model. I've tried to make sure that the textures and every, everything were uh, set up properly uh, for making it look good, you know, to keep it consistent and stuff like that. So that's basically that part. And then what we have is, I guess we'll do the straight part next. So this is a straight one. Uh, this is also facing north as you see the sides going directly like this. Uh, this is important for the script because we want to make sure that all of it is uh, rotated based on a direction and it's easiest to rotate if it's all facing north. So this is why this is set up. Now with this one, I have set the display a little bit different uh, for the GUI. Now I've set it to um, 135 for this angle and 30 for this angle and everything else is pretty much the same as the block. So I've just adjusted these, uh, the rotation here, and that will give you sim something similar to the fence rotation for uh, vanilla Minecraft for your straight model. Now, this is the model that you're gonna be basically placing down. So you wanna make sure that the, the inventory slot and everything is uh, set up appropriately for what you're actually gonna be displaying. So. Uh, this is the most important part for actually setting the display properties. I've also adjusted the rotation on the first person and not so much this or third person, but definitely the th first person just to kind of make it look a little bit more uh, equal to what it would be with a first person. And the other things I've just basically left as is. All right, so the corner piece uh, we have next trying to do it based on the sides. So this is a quarter piece. Uh, the two connection points are uh, north and east. So this would be north, this would be east, that's west, and that's south at the back here. So again, the call faces needed to be set up. And if you have any textures that go between these, I should probably mention that now. Uh, what you want to do is you wanna make sure that those parts are disabled because you don't want, um, anything rendering there and it could cause lag if you're rendering something between the textures and stuff like that so uh, because it's not those those two end pieces for the west and east aren't being shown really uh, what I've done is I've just disabled them using the uh, remove face function when I'm actually selecting it so like say I'm selecting this one it's already selected on north and I would just remove it and then that would basically just remove the texture, but I don't want to do that. <laughs> Not for that one at least, but for the uh, other sides that are like connected like this, we don't want it for the end part right here. We just use call faces for that one and it will automatically d disable it when there's a block connected. But uh, we do want it for the parts that are on inside of models that aren't actually connecting to anything particularly. Um, or at least not being shown like some of these are going to be shown like on these larger pieces those are going to be shown because it's larger but the parts that go between it we don't actually have any physical side that we can see because of the two parts being larger so we just disable those ones on the small joints uh between the uh fence there and again with this one we only disabled the one that was facing this direction. So basically up against this model here, but we did call face on the other side. All right, so what else do we have? We have the junction and this one is, I'm pretty sure the three-way. 
So we have it on the west and east and then north. So again, every, all these models are facing north and you can tell by the north direction here when we're actually modeling the bottle model that you need these particular rotations. It'll make more sense when we get into the script itself. So I will provide the script as usual in the workspace so it's just easier for people to download and install. So it'll be in the project files. And then we have the intersection, which is the four-way uh, connection. So this would be the when all four sides of that particular block is connected. So that's basically what it looks like. And again, it doesn't really matter what side, as long as it's even. We have it facing north automatically, but there's all north, south, east, and west directions connection. So, and you can see that I've just basically numbered the cubes through all of them and stuff like that. So. All right, so that's the block bench stuff covered. I'm just going to discard uh, those say, or settings and then where we can go into M Crater. Okay, so you will need Nerdy's block state plugin. I will link to that in the description of the video. Um, there is a new element when you actually create, uh, like have that installed and this it's called the block state. And what it will look like is something like this. When you start it up, there won't be actually any states installed. Um, how I've set it up is I've done block state one, which is the post. And then I have done the end one for two. And then I've done the corner for three. And then the four I have done for the junction, which is the three way again. And then for five, I've done the intersection, which is the four way connection. Uh, the straight one is the uh, default, which is block state zero, which is not listed here, but that will be the default state for the thing. We also want to make sure that the block is actually selected. And because I only have one block in here, it's only showing up here, but you might have more multiple blocks in your workspace. Um, make sure that you have the right one selected for the block state, and this will make sure that it's connected to the block itself. Uh, for the model, uh, you want to set up the bounding boxes, sizes. Uh, this will be based on the rotation of the model itself when you import it, uh, not on the other rotations. So you don't need to worry about the alternate rotations of the block state. You just need to worry about the ones that you modeled in Blockbench. So basically, I've set up the rotations for all these models here under the um, things. Some of them require double models. So that's basically what I'm doing here. At, or block like the coordinates and stuff and then I've also set the particle texture and imported or set the model as well so those are all the parts here uh, it supports luminescence as well if you want to do that and you can also um, set your default uh, texture for your block as well I don't think that's actually used outside of the icon but I'm not sure exactly what it's used for it's just required so make sure that you have it Okay, so that's the block state part. Um, the block itself. So the block, uh, we have our texture and then we've set the rotation to player side, south, west, north, east. We've selected our straight model and we've set cut or cutout. And we've also set uh, water logging and uh, submerged on water for these two. And it should be a transparent part by default now if you want to apply any other changes to that that's fine we can even set our particle texture if we really wanted to here so we can set that for our um, block texture there and the model for this is set up for the one same direction as the default model state which is in your block bench model so you might need to have to calculate that i will cover that just quickly how to calculate the sides. Okay, so I'll cover the corner part first because, well, I'll cover the corner part because it's a complex model and does require two different parts. So we will just create another cube like this and we're going to bring it uh, to about here. And what we're gonna do is we're going to bring it up. So it's 16 by 16 and we're going to bring it up to our part right here. Now this will give us the starting and lo ending location. Um, when you're actually setting your position, this is what your position for your starting position will be. 
And I suggest what you do is you basically offset your, your pivot point for this uh, cube that you just created. And what we're going to do is we're going to manipulate it so it's all the way on to the other side of the cube on the opposite corner of where this um, where the blue lines all meet. So the blue and red lines, that's where your uh, position will be for your bottom for your mo your cube. So this is the corner that the position is and we want to go to the opposite corner, which is on this side here. So we're just going to move that whoop, wrong one. Uh, we want to move this all the way to the other side. And that's going to give us what our side is for that particular cube. So this is the maximum size and that's the minimum size for your um, bounding box. And then you also want to do that for the other part as well. So for example, we'll just quickly do that other side here. And we'll expand it to bring it up and then we want to connect it up to there make sure it's the same height and again what we're we're doing with this cube here is we're going to make sure that our bounding box or our access point is um, at the other side of the cube itself so we're going to make sure that it's over on this side so it's on this corner here and our connection points for our default position is here. So we know that the starting position is 10, 0, and 6. And then the maximum part is 16, 16, and 10. So that will give us what we need for actually setting our model parts up in here and in our block state itself. That's basically what I did, and it worked just fine. So, All right, so that's basically it. Um, when you actually go and do that, just make sure to, like, delete those parts after you're finished and export it because you will need to um, not have that or you'll be like showing textures that aren't really there. Okay, so for properties, what I've done is I've signed it a creative tab. I've set the hardness and resistance. I've given it a name and set the material type. And I have set the vanilla sound to wood. You can change this however you want. And I've also set the uh, tool able to destroy to an axe. Um, there isn't actually any harvest level per se anymore. You can set the default ones. Wood is generally none, so you can basically mine it with um, your hand and everything like that. You can require a tool if you want to, but again, wood doesn't require it. Something like iron, uh, like a metal fence or stone fence would probably require uh, stone tools and you would want to require the um, probably a pickaxe and have it set up like this. But uh, for what we have, we, we can just set the, this, the uh, drop, sing, drop amount and stuff like that to this. Now we also want to make sure that it drops this particular block state. So we're not gonna set a custom drop for this or the create a pick item because it's just one block so we don't need to really worry about that too much. Uh, and uh, we don't need a loot table. We just need to make sure that it only drops one. Advanced properties. Uh, we don't have a tick rate for this and we don't have a random tick rate. Uh, I've set the color on the map to green because there is moss on the top texture. So it would make sense to have it kind of green. And for the plants, I've disabled that. It doesn't really need to be there. And um, the only other thing that really is important on this particular page is setting the AI path node type to fence. So this will basically um, make entities that are um, like pigs and stuff like that, basically not able to hop over the block because it can renders it as a fence type. So you wanna do that for your model itself. You can set the push position and everything however you like though. Tile entity, we're not actually using it. There's no tile entity involved in this. Energy, no energy. Triggers. We have when block added and uh, neighbor, when neighbor block changes. So those are the two procedures that we're basically running. And if we open this up, we're actually running a call procedure, which you can find under the advanced tab. And we're calling just a single uh, procedure, which is the same one, by the way, under these two um, particular triggers here. So for that, it's just our model update script, which is this one right here. We'll cover that right now. So if we open up the thing, there's a whole bunch of settings up here for the template that are provided. Everything is else 
uh, everything below is automatically calculated. So as long as your fence and everything is set up the same way, you should be able to go on just use Nerdy's block plate block state plugin. Uh, you can set the the block state number order for each different type. I've named the fence parts as you see here. Um, if you have a different way of doing it, you just insert the ID for the um, block state. Again, the ID is found under here. It says block state 1, block state 2, block state 3, and so on. So basically you would do that for each one of these particular parts for your fence. And your default one for your block is always going to be zero. So if you have a straight one, it's going to be zero for that. The default rotation, again, if I have my rotation for block bench set to north, then this is needs to be set to north uh, for whatever connection point where they're all always going to be connected to. So uh, except the post, because post has no connections, but the, the for all the other ones, this is required. And then what we have is we're just getting the position of the current block. We're getting the block state, which is going to test uh, for the block itself and store that to a block state um, variable called fence. And then we're testing for the block states for the blocks next to the block itself. And we're going to basically compare that with if that block is the same as the other one. And we're testing for all four sides. And we're basically using the not block to indicate that if that side is not uh, connected properly. So basically if it's not the same block, then we're just going to ignore that for that particular uh, side and rotation. Um, in short, what it's doing, this is for all sides. This is for the, um, okay, so that's the junction or intersection. These are the junction ones for up to here. And then we have I think this is let's see we have a straight connection here it says so right on the block state one and then we have another straight one for the rotation and then we have the corner pieces and that goes up to here and then we have the end pieces and then last we have we have the last thing that we're testing for is the post so this uh, requires all the blocks to not be true um, we're setting the block state for that so if you have Nerdy's block state plugin installed, you can click here and you're using this block to basically change the model. And I'm using the numbers that we assigned above to basically set the model there. And for the rotation, we're just basically using the rotational blocks opposite um, 90 degrees clockwise and 90 degrees counterclockwise to automatically rotate based on the default rotation for the block. So that's why I'm doing it that way. So you can easily just configure it through the top here and everything else is calculated. All right, so that's basically it. Um, again, this procedure um, will be available for you in the workspace download. So it will be under, when you extract the files uh, for the project workspace, there will be one called procedures in here and it will basically consist of the ones that you see in the workspace and there will be also a workspace folder here where you can actually install the workspace and um, when you do that what you do is you just go boot up your launcher and you go import from file and then you basically select the zip file in the workspace folder from the project files folder so this is the project files where it consists of all the models and stuff. There's a workspace, that one inside the workspace zip. You don't extract, you just basically import directly to your thing and make sure that you set up a new um, folder for it in your projects and stuff like that. So uh, it will actually ask you for the file first and then it will ask you for a folder to install it to. Um, so it'll ask you, one says open and the other one says we're like, save to or import to or something like that and it will take a couple seconds to import make sure though that you have uh, nerdy's block state plugin i'll just quickly show you what the page is so this is the page that you want to download the um, block state for uh, it has support for 2023.4 and 2024.2 at the moment uh, the one that i'm using in 
the current model uh, 2024.2, I'll make sure to provide in the thing because it will be required to actually import the workspace. So it'll be in the plugins file and you'll have to install that on your own. Um, only reason why I'm providing it is because just in case the block state plugin is, moves on in development uh, through the years, it might not be provided anymore. I'm not sure where, if he has it on his GitHub or something like that where you can download it for different versions. So I'll just provide it in the uh, download as well so it's all in one place and then you guys can install the plugin. Also, if you need any help with a tutorial, I have a Discord server that you can check out in the description below. It will take you to my website and then you can join via the Discord page there. Uh, we have a whole bunch of um, channels for the M Creator section and if you want to post updates about your mods and stuff, there's tons of different other places you can post and connect with the community here. We, At the time of the recording of this video, we just got to... 100 uh, members in like eight days so it's definitely growing really good and um, hope to see you there outside of that if you are new to my channel don't forget to subscribe comment down below rate the video and i'll see you guys next time thanks for watching peace out